do LDLs cause myocardial infarctions? And an MI is otherwise known as a heart attack. This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Hey, good evening, TRT and Hormone Optimization Group. If you don't know me, I'm Justin. I like to talk about TRT, thyroid, and I also like talking about lipids every now and then as well. That makes a good segue to what tonight's topic is. I was chatting with Dr. Steve and thought a good idea for a topic would be to discuss lipids, namely, do LDLs cause myocardial infarctions, and an MI is otherwise known as a heart attack. So, LDLs in themselves aren't, they're not inherently evil things. They're li lipoproteins. They're essentially vehicles that shuttle and disseminate throughout the body. They direct the structure and function of lipids, and they have some metabolic processes themselves. There's nothing bad about them. Like I said, there's nothing inherently evil about them, but they do play a role into the development of MIs and ASCBD. ASCBD essentially translates to atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. So when you think of LDLs, historically we think your LDL is high, you're going to have a heart attack. I like using analogies, so tonight's topic I'm going to use an analogy to describe the function of LDLs and the implications that they have in the development of heart attacks. So let's think of LDLs as passenger buses on an interstate, okay? And let's think of having a heart attack as a wreck on the interstate, okay? So if you have small, dense, LDLs, or which typically come accompanied with a high particle number, then let's say a high particle number means there's a lot of vehicles on the interstate, okay? Now, let's say the interstate has mm, poor road quality. The road has not been maintained for years. So we'll say in this situation, the poor road quality refers to Endothelial, endothelial dysfunction of the vasculature itself, okay? So now we have lots of vehicles on the road, and now we have hazardous road conditions. So once again, we introduce the hazardous road conditions, so that increases the likelihood of having a crash. In this, this analogy, once again, a crash we refer to as a myocardial infarction or some ASCVD event, okay? So next, let's say, the patient has hypertension, okay? So in this situation, we'll say hypertension means everyone is speeding. So now we have poor road quality, everyone is speeding, and there's a high particle number. In other words, there's a lot of cars. Mm. Let's add a little more to the mix. Let's add diabetes or insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, something of that nature. So in this situation, we would refer to diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome as rain. So now we have lots of vehicles, hazardous road conditions, got a lot of rain, and everybody's speeding. Now you can kind of see a scenario that would set up for someone to experience an MI. Like I said, in this situation, an MI would be analogous to a wreck on the interstate. We've got a lot of factors coming into play we got the constellation of aggravating risk factors that would increase the likelihood of a wreck occurring. Hmm. Maybe we should throw something else into the mix. What if now it's nighttime? So now it's nighttime. It's raining. Poor road quality. Lots of cars. And they're speeding. So think of that. We have this amalgamation of risk factors that are all contributing to the increased likelihood that there will be a wreck on the interstate. Once again, when I say a wreck on the interstate, I'm saying that the patient may have a myocardial infarction, ASCVD event. So if you see, LDLs in and of themselves don't inherently equal heart attack. 
they're just one risk factor. They're one player in the whole constellation of things that are aggravating that could contribute to a myocardial infarction or an ASCVD event occurring. So I hope this analogy kind of sums things up. I like to speak in analogies because for me, it paints a clinical picture in my mind. Anyway, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Hope, hopefully y'all got something from this. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. And now click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization.